I've started in on the painting, the very first layers of egg tempera, and you can see that these wide swaths of color look really messy. You can see every single brush stroke on them. And this is because um, egg tempera works a little bit like an, a watercolor that doesn't lift off between layers, so you can layer it on top of an, one another. But it's definitely very translucent, and so every single brush stroke is visible behind the other layers of color. Um, one of the reasons that I'm not using acrylic paints for this is because egg tempera gives this translucency and opalescence to the color that's not really possible with acrylics because they're plastic, they're very matte. Um, but the thing with acrylics is that they would allow me to do a single layer of paint and just be done because the paint blends in. Now another thing that I could have done is I could have worked in oils um, and oils do have a beautiful quality of color that I personally really like for my art um, but with oil paint you're blending the color on the canvas itself and what this means is that like the color is staying there longer and if you want to work in layers um, or you want to work with really discrete sections of detail you have to wait a really long time for them to dry so for example if we look at this section right here you can see that i've worked in these layers of color i've got the background i've got the outlines and then i will be adding in the coloring on the knots themselves so like this knot will probably be red if i remember and then this one here will be yellow if i were working with oil color then i would have to wait days between each layer because Otherwise, I'd paint in the background and then I'd try adding the details and I'd be lifting up the color on the background and it would just be a really frustrating experience and I just don't have the time for that right now. Um, but the thing with egg tempera is I can do multiple layers of color where it starts hiding these brush strokes. But in some sections, like this section, I don't want to take the time to paint the background five or six times over. This is one of the reasons why I did my underpainting that's these green colors here. Because as you can see, as you come in really close to the detail here, let me get in a little closer, every single tiny brush stroke that I made is fully visible here. Um, and the way that egg tempera lays down, you can see every brush stroke, which means you can see the color behind it. And so here I'm laying these reddish browns on top of a green. And it's kind of like working with pointillism. So in pointillism, think like, George Seurat or um, artists like that, they're laying color next to each other and your brain is doing the mixing of the colors um, and this can result in a more a perception of a more richness of color than if you were physically blending the pigments together. Um, it's just a stylistic thing uh, but you can kind of do this with egg tempera. This is where you get that opalescence and so by having the greens in the background of the reddish brown I'm al allowing a little bit more color to show through um, and this is one thing that I kind of struggled with when I first started with the color on this painting, is that it's not perfectly flat swathes of color. They're not perfectly flat fields. Um, and I kind of liked how Celtic knotwork looks a little bit fractal, like think mathematical fractal, where you magnify into deeper and deeper, deeper layers, and there's more and more detail revealed. And to some extent, you can do that with this painting. So you're coming out here, and you have a certain level of detail and you magnify in another, I walked just like two feet here, and you start seeing all of the knot work that was not super visible before. You step in again, and you can see the complexity. You step in again, and the perfectionist in me wants this to be perfectly flat, absolutely perfect color, no variance in the lines, no little wibbly wobbliness where I had a bit too much caffeine. Um, that is a problem, but these, these brush strokes here, I actually want to have some texture to them. So when you're looking at it from a distance, you get more complexity to the color. So it's not fully fractal because nobody's gonna be looking at this painting with their nose an inch away from it because I know where it's gonna be hung. People are gonna be at least a couple feet away for the most part. And so I don't need to go to that level of detail. And besides that level of detail make it, may make it not quite as gorgeous from a distance. So that's definitely what I'm focusing on here. Now we're gonna come in, I'm gonna point the camera here and do a time lapse as I work on this section. So I already have my underpainting with the green India ink 
and I'm gonna paint the background on it and start with the outlines um, and kind of talk through a little bit of my technique in working with these tiny brush strokes. So I've got my first mix of color here and I'm using this teeny, teeny, tiny little brush. You can see how small that is right there. I'm gonna pick up just a little bit of color about halfway up to, toward the ferrule on the brush and I'm gonna knock it off on this bit of scrap paper here. And the reason for this is that if I'm using like a really wet load of paint, I'm gonna start getting beads of color as I paint and it's gonna be even more uneven. So it's almost like a dry brushing technique. And then I'm just gonna come in here and lay down stroke after stroke. For coloring in these large areas, it's not like working with acrylic or oil. So I'm gonna do like an acrylic or oil technique right now. Like I'm laying down a really thick stroke. And you can start seeing the color doesn't blend right here. Let me zoom in. You can see every little bit of stroke, brush stroke on here. And it's a little bit uneven and uh, not clean because it's all different directions. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating my strokes really consistently in a vertical direction, little bit by little bit, while I'm doing this kind of dry brushing technique. And what this is allowing is just a really firm control over the pigment and over the details so that I can get the paint exactly where I want it and only where I want it. And every brush stroke is fairly consistent in orientation um, I just happen to really like that. I don't think it's strictly necessary, but I think it looks a lot cleaner. So I'm gonna set this on time-lapse because it's gonna take me quite a while and nobody wants to sit through watching just that. Um, here you can see I didn't knock off the paint enough and so it got a little bit watery and a little bit goopy. So I'll just kind of blend it off as I go. It's almost more like staining than painting at this point here. All right, time lapse time.